Hey guys, it's been a while. Sorry about the wind, it just came up on me. So, you're out wheeling, you're on a seven or eight trail, there's no bypasses, there's really no way but to get through the trail, and your lockers stop working on your JL or JT. Well, that has happened to me. And as frustrating as it is, it happens. And now I'm better for it because now I have a workaround how to get off the trail if that happens. And I now carry an ABS sensor in my tool bag to get me off the trail if that happens again. However, in this video, I'll also show you a hack how to get around the computer to still engage your lockers on your JT and JL. That's if you have a Taser Mini. So anyhow, let's get to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you start your vehicle. So you have that service four wheel drive, four wheel drive system, temporary unavailable. It also triggers your anti-lock brake system and your stability control. Now, I'm gonna engage it in a four wheel drive and show you what that looks like. So we just drop down into four low. And now I'm gonna attempt to engage the lockers here. So I'm gonna try the rear locker. And you see it's just gonna flash. Then it says axle locks canceled. I'll try them both. So you can see that can be a huge problem, especially if you're on the Rubicon Trail or you're, you're overlanding in your middle of nowhere and it took lockers to get where you're at and now you need lockers to get out from where you're at. So again, a pretty good idea to have those as trail spares. Anything can happen. You can have a branch rip one. You can maybe your shock breaks and you overextend. I may have more problems in the sensor if that happens, but you get the idea. Okay, I know for a lot of you I'm preaching to the choir, but anyways, I wanted to show you the axle disconnect and how it kind of plays a part in the four-wheel drive system. It's this little device right here. So, and you can see it's electrical. Inside this little box, there's a fork, a little arm, and it goes back and forth. And what it does is it moves a coupling that joins this axle shaft with the outer axle shaft. And so what that allows is this allows the axle to disconnect so that you can do this. So your driveline is not constantly turning when you're going down the freeway. So what does it do? Well, it, it limits drag. It increases your gas mileage a little bit like not that great not that big of a deal however for me it's a huge deal because I have a six inch lift when I engage um, if I had an eliminator kit in here my drive shaft would constantly turn and vibrate because how high my lift is so I actually like the disconnect for that fact the other alternative is go to hubs but anyways to the point what happens if you have a, something wrong with your four-wheel drive system on the new JTs and JLs, you have a sensor that goes bad. What happens is the computer says, wait a minute, I can't tell how fast you're going. Okay, if you remember, your lockers automatically shut off if you go a certain speed. So then when you try to engage the four-wheel drive and the computer doesn't know your speed, doesn't know what you're doing, what it's gonna do is disable this so that this will never engage so you end up being stuck in two-wheel drive. There are overrides for this. If you have a Taser Mini, you can basically shut this piece off and still get home in four-wheel drive. 
You still may not be able to use your lockers though because they all talk to each other. So there are some workarounds in the aftermarket, but anyhow, to the point at hand. So I've basically went through two sensors and I've, it took me a minute to figure out what was going on. Anyhow, we're gonna change those sensors out. All right, we're at the right rear wheel. The only way I was able to detect that it was this sensor is I actually had to take it into the dealer for an oil change and I asked them to run the scanner on it. Now, if you see, I do have a little oil here. This is another common problem that they're seeing with gladiators is that this rear seal um, goes bad and there isn't a replacement from the factory. They have to actually replace the entire axle shaft and seal together. So this has been leaking since the day I drove it off the lot. It's gotten a little bit worse. It, it's never gotten wet like this. It's just kind of always been just kind of residue. So anyhow, this is your bolt right here to take off for the, it's just an eight millimeter and it's metric. Most everything's metric on this thing. So let's get to it. One, one little bolt and then this just slides right out just like that so and then it just has a plug at the top if you follow the sensor line up it goes right in between the body and the frame right here let me just get a stand make it easier all right I hope you can see that so I'm gonna take this little plug right here or this little screwdriver in that little clip there, I'm just gonna push it down and move it forward. Then I can take this and pull it apart like that. And then you push on that little piece right there, that black piece, and it unplugs like that, no problem. So the install is just a reverse process. So essentially what I'm gonna do is, is I'll just zip tie this with the brake line now I've already drooped this out so I know that the way I have this it's plenty long so that might change if I decide to go with an anorock sway bar I might need to loosen up you know disconnect this from all the attachment points and droop it out to make sure that there isn't any tension on this because obviously something happened to this whether it's possible that the oil from the leaky axle damaged this but again, this is my second one. I had a front one go out that didn't have any other issues. So I'm hoping that it was the oil that killed this one, but I don't know. So we'll go ahead and get this all buttoned up and that's it. So let me show you kind of a, a hack to get around the lockers until you get your sensor fixed. And how I found this was basically trial and error. So what you first have to do Start your vehicle. Now this is only gonna work if you have a Taser Mini, just so you know. If you have the Taser Mini, what you can do is, with the vehicle in park, you can activate the rear locker. Now you notice I'm in two wheel drive, in park, I activated the rear locker because with the Taser Mini, you can use your locker in two-wheel drive. So therefore, it doesn't use the sensors and the sensors are not telling to turn it off. So now what you're going to do is now that you've got your rear locker locked in two-wheel drive, now you're going to shift your transfer case into four low. And now we're in four low, if you can see that there. Now I can put it in drive and it says... Uh, it wants to unlock, but you can actually just hit the button again. And it will lock. Oh, we came out of neutral there. All right. So it will stay locked. I just popped out of neutral. That's why it's freaking out. So it's going to blink. There you go. So now it's, lo it's locked. And now I'm going to hit the front locker. 
and now it says front and rear axles locked. So that's how I got around the sensor. Again, that is only with that Taser Mini. So basically, two-wheel drive, hit the locker button, shift it in a four-wheel drive, lockers are activated, you're, you're good to go. What happens though, if you shut the vehicle off, you have to do that sequence, sequence again. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I just installed it, so we're gonna see if everything worked out. And so you know, I didn't clear the computer or anything. I just plugged it in. If you notice, there's no service four wheel drive light, there's no traction control light, and there's no ABS light. So now we'll just do a quick check to see if the lockers work. Back up a little bit, I'll put it in four low. And now I will engage my rear locker. Okay. Inch forward for a second. There you go. Rear axles locked. And now front and rear axles locked. So there you go. So quick little fix. Handy to have one of those for a trail spare. Also, having a Taser Mini, in my opinion, is priceless because I was able to still get off the trail using my lockers after probably about 20 minutes of fiddling around with different combinations to try to get this thing to work. So, something to consider. Please subscribe so I can get more of these videos out. Cheers.